Putin always wanted to look like a real man. He liked to be photographed without his shirt on, or wearing a kimono, fishing with a rod, or even riding a horse. He wanted so much to make people love him, that once he had damaged his back. And still, he is being hated. The illnesses of Putin is one of the most popular topics for investigations for the world media. For instance, in 2020, The Sun claimed that Putin has Parkinson's disease. The USA Today reported about Asperger's syndrome. The New York Post about cancer, while The Week had specified Putin has spine cancer. US intelligence services claim that amid these treatments, Putin had gotten steroid rage just before the invasion to Ukraine. And so-called Russian media always talk about Putin as of a dead man, either good or nothing at all. Putin's spoken person Peskov is constantly repeating that Putin is healthy. Putin is okay. Self-proclaimed president of Belarus Lukashenko also diagnosed his colleague dictator. Он, как у нас часто говорят, живее всех живых. Он много раз простудится на всех наших похоронах. But the journalists of the Russian investigative media called Project claim it's not true, and they have found several pieces of evidence. So, according to Project, Putin started having serious health problems in 2012 when he fell off the horse. Не один раз снимали, я тренировался, и так вот получилось, что лошадь перед перед барьером встала, я сделал такой кульбит. Вот то, что реально кульбит. Boom. Not long after this boom, Putin, together with Kirill, the Patriarch of Moscow, was laying flowers to the monument on the Red Square, and Putin was limping. Since this incident, Putin started to shorten or even to cancel his official meetings. He started to wear a back brace, people said he urgently needed spine surgery. Suddenly Putin has disappeared from public, and later he was regularly disappearing once a year. It's a proven fact that he had some treatment, but it's unknown what type of treatment. There are legends about alternative medicine in Kremlin. The investigators say that 10 years ago enema was quite popular among the officials. Today more luxury services are provided for wealthy civil servants. Minister of Defense Shoigu was shown to put in an unusual bath of a broth of Altai deer horns. In spring the horns of these animals grow several centimeters per day. And while they are not stoned yet, there's still blood inside those horns. They cut the horns of the alive animals. They believe that such horns have healing power. In this way, the denazification of Altai deers has begun. Putin literally was swimming in blood. When he got better, he decided to play hockey again in 2017. Thus, the denazification of hockey has started. <laughs> Ничего себе! Это нарушение! А за нарушение сегодня штрафной бросок, а не две минуты. What was the problem this time, either shoulder or back, is unknown. But after this accident, the trauma surgeon started visiting Putin in Sochi. The Russian investigators have found dozens of agreements between the hospitals and the hotels in Sochi about the accommodations of different doctors. At first, five doctors lived there. Later, their number increased. Otolaryngologist, surgeon, neurosurgeon, intensivist, physiotherapist, among others. The same story happened in 2019. Putin was playing hockey again, and something went wrong one more time. Three doctors have always followed Putin since then. They were otolaryngologists and oncology surgeon. Interesting fact about the last one. The topic of his doctoral research was the characteristics of the diagnosis and surgical treatment of elderly patients with thyroid cancer. Let's not forget that Putin will turn 70 soon. Putin himself showed interest in the methods of fighting cancer. In July 2020, he had a meeting with the head of the National Medical Endocrinology Research Center. They discussed thyroid cancer and hormonal medicine. 
At that time, the COVID pandemic was already spreading around the world. So having left the hockey arena, Putin went down to his bunker. He held all the meetings online, and those who were allowed to stay in one room with him were obliged to stay isolated in the quarantine, to take a PCR test and even to have his stool sample checked. And humiliating huge distances were kept during the in-person meetings even with President Macron and Chancellor Scholz. He hasn't left his bunker since then, but his vivid holograms frequently give speeches at press conferences. And not so long ago, one of the holograms of the Kremlin famous hockey player threatened NATO with nuclear rockets.